I'm Dr. P, Dr. Papa Vasiliu. I'm a spine neurosurgeon, but most of my patients call me Dr. P, and you're all welcome to call me like that. Uh, I've been practicing in the Boston area over 20 years. I'm the co-director of the Spine Center downtown Boston. I'm in charge of neurosurgery here at the Milton Hospital, which is next door to you. And my primary interest is spine surgeries and the aging spine. So when I was asked to give the, a talk here, I thought the topic of low back pain, especially on the aging population, is something that bothers all of us. And I, I thought it's good to share my thoughts. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about the low back pain, uh, things to watch, things not to worry about, when it's the time to see your doctor, when you can say, you know, let's try medications a few days, and what's to really worry you about it. I'll show you what surgeries you're doing and what we can do. Uh, before starting the formal presentation, uh, I wanted to talk to you about the patient that I saw yesterday. It was downtown in Boston. So she comes in really nicely dressed up, makeup, with her hat, amazing. I looked at my notes, she looked like 75 or 80, she was 90. So very pleasant, was talking and she was very pleasant to talk to and she was telling me her story. So she used to work for one airline at Boston Logan, she used to go at the ticket counter, she would fly everywhere in the world. She had tried skydiving, uh, she did sailing, parasailing, paragliding, very adventurous. She told me why she never got married, because there was a very young guy that was great, they were going to move to California, but then he tells her, we're going to live with mom and my sister. <laughs> and she said that was it. <laughs> so since then I was so scared that I never got married. So the bottom line is, she looked great. And people are saying these days, you know what, I'm 80 years old, I don't think we should do anything. This is not the case. I feel like people in their 70s and 80s, even 90 years old, have the right to at least discuss the option of surgery to relieve their back. So this person, we talked about surgery, She's going to do it most probably. She hasn't given me a final answer yet. Uh, she wants to discuss with her significant other who's like 15 years younger. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to talk about low back pain. So overall, if you look at an office visit at the primary care physician, this is anywhere between the second and fifth reason for people they're going to visit. So if I'm a family practitioner, my second, third, or fourth most frequent complaint of my patients will be low back pain. And most people come and tell us, I have back pain, that's it. It's not like I have a disc herniation or anything like that. So most of us are going to experience low back pain at least once in our life. If people tell you I never had low back pain, and they're like 70 or 80 years old, they probably don't remember well. We all have had episodes of back pain. The problem is most of them, or the good thing is, they resolve. After a few days, it goes away. And we don't need to do anything. So 90%, nine out of 10, are going to go away in four weeks. So the people don't even need to see a physician if that's the case. Only 7%, seven out of 100 patients will develop pain which is bothering them for a long period of time. It's the same between men and women, but a lot of people are disabled because of the back pain. So it's a big problem. People are really worried about the backs and the back pain. So when this, you come to a physician's office to talk about the back pain, there are a lot of things that your doctor is going to ask you, and you need to be thinking about these things before you even approaching to the doctor. Like, they were going to look up at the anatomy, like where is the pain? Does it hurt up here? Does it hurt lower there? Does it hurt all the way to my tailbone? 
We're going to talk about any history. Did we have a fall? Did we have any injury where it tripped a little bit? Especially with older women who may have what we call osteoporotic fractures, which is a broken bone just because of osteoporosis if it's left untreated. And of course, we need to do an exam as well when you come to us. So just a quick, very, very quick explanation of how your back is. There are five vertebra number, named lumbar vertebra for the lumbar spine, and it's num lumbar one, two, three, four, five. So these are the strongest, the largest vertebra people have. So this is how your spine looks if you look at the five, at, on the side. So this is from the side, that's from the back. And this is if you look from the top down. This is the front, this is the back, the left and the right. So whenever someone comes to my office, I try to share the MRI and I show them also how the spine looks like. So this way, I try to explain to people what I'm going to do when I do surgery. And I can come back and I talk to you about what we do in different surgeries like that. So this is the disc. This is the disc that lies between the vertebra. That's what it looks like. And here it shows you this is your spine looking from the side again. And these are the nerves as they leave at different levels on your spine. So what problems will people come to me? What will the problems that are going to lead to low back pain? First of all, it's desiccation, this dehydration. So the discs are the little pillows that are stay between the vertebra and they're the shock absorbers. They're like little plastic material that's very, very light, like a pillow. With time, it starts to degenerate. And people over 50 and 60 routinely have a lot of these discs desiccated, losing their properties, and they don't work well as shock absorbers. So what that will do is potentially cause back pain. The next level of degeneration is when the disc ruptures. So basically the disc leaves its normal position it moves to the point that puts pressure on the nerves. And that will cause the leg pain, the numbness people complain, and sometimes the back pain. You may have also heard about bone spurs. So it's overgrowth of bones, basically. Osteophytes, you may hear them as well, that may be putting pressure into the spine, into the nerves, and also causing back pain and leg pain as well. Whenever we talk about back pain, we need to know, is it leg pain as well? So there are different questions we are going to be asking you and try to find out what's going on and why you have back pain. So what can cause back pain long-term factors? Obesity, doing a lot of hard work, especially lifting a lot, heavy weights that your body is not ready to do, twisting your back, especially if you do something like lift something heavy and moving it. This is very difficult problem to deal with if you're not you have well-trained muscles on your back. Any type of trauma, of course. And sometimes people that have a lot of depression, like psychiatric type of disorders, everything is exaggerated. So people that will say have severe depression they have the tendency to exaggerate sometimes how their pain is. And when it's a pain that will be tolerated by someone else, someone with major depression may say my pain is worse than what you would expect, especially with an MRI with a back exam doesn't look, that does not look very bad. So these are all important factors that we need to evaluate to decide how we deal with someone's back pain. So. I have an example here, a patient named Jonathan, who had low back pain that happened 24 hours ago. So when someone comes to my office as a primary care physician with this complaint, first of all, I think it's a little premature. But on the other hand, if the pain is so much, I need to do something for it. So he has the history. I was lifting something really heavy. And then I started having this severe back pain. And I have back pain and leg pain. So how shall I deal with that? First of all, 
you don't need to see the specialist right away. You're suspecting someone who's lifting a heavy box, so it's either mechanical back pain, as we call it, which means that the pain happened just from the heavy way we lifted, or maybe a herniated disc could have caused that. So at this point, it's premature to get an MRI or send to a specialist. But again, when I see this person as a primary care physician, I need to think in my mind and I need to worry. Are there any red flags? Is anything I worried about? So things we're going to ask you. Do you have any problems controlling your bladder? And when I ask about that, I'm not talking about not making to the bathroom on time, because it happens with everyone, basically. But I'm asking about not knowing it's happening. So the question is, if you have a bathroom next door, will you have accidents? No. If the bathroom is half a mile away, will you have accidents? Yes. So this is not as worrisome as it would be when you tell me I need to wear a diaper because I don't know when I go. So this is a red flag. This is very worrisome. If anything like that happens to anyone, you should talk to your primary or go to the emergency room. And again, if it happens suddenly, if it's been going on for 10 years, you don't need to go to the emergency room, of course. Just try to use a little common sense as well. Uh, the other thing that your primary should do is get an exam. First of all, lay hands on, lay hands on your back. Where is the pain? If there's a lot of pain in a particular area, it could be a broken bone. How do we find that out? Very easy, plain x-ray. And then we proceed to the next steps. The other tests, check the strength of your legs. By checking the strength of the legs, we can find out if a nerve is compressed. If a nerve is compressed, then we suspect there is a disc herniation. If the strength is acceptable, like I can lift my leg, I can lift my foot, then we can continue to treat with medications and maybe physical therapy. If on the other hand the strength is weak, like my foot keeps catching and I can't walk, I keep doing that, then it's more worrisome that there is significant damage happening to the nerve and we need to treat it appropriately. So the expectation from the primary physician is to get information. Is my back pain going to go away? I'm worried. What do I need to do? Your primary care physician should be able to do that. Second, advice. What shall I do? How shall I treat this pain? Hot, cold, stay in bed or don't stay in bed? Shall I go back to work? Shall I start lifting again the heavy stuff I was lifting or shall I hold off for a month? So these are the expectations that the primary care physician should be able to answer. And if they have a hard time doing it, that's when they will send a patient to us. And a plan. So I have these symptoms. I have the back pain. I have the leg pain. What shall I do? Medication. The primary care physician will prescribe medication. We don't want people to be in pain. Number two, physical therapy. And then a decision, when do I see you again? How long shall we let this be like that? And also, what are the red flags? What do I watch for? So there is a big information pattern plan that the primary care physician will have to discuss with you. If you know that from what we're talking today, it's even better. Because you don't need to be waiting for a phone call back. You don't need to be waiting for hours. So, and this is the goal of this presentation, to try to understand, pe make people understand their back pain. And we're going to talk about the acute pain, which is this case. But we also will talk about chronic back pain. What could be causing pain that's again and again and again, and it never goes away. People all say, my back pain, is because I have herniated discs. So I put this slide and I ask physicians 
what they think the percentage of the low back pain is related to a disc herniation? The correct answer is this one, 4%. Disc herniations, when you see them on MRI, usually do not cause back pain. So everybody usually gives me answer 40% or 80%. That's not the case. Everyone has disc bulges or disc herniations. Not everyone has pain, severe pain. So very small percentage will be caused just by a disc herniation. There are other factors that contribute to the back pain that are more important than the disc herniation. So what do we need to worry when we have back pain? The things that I need everyone to worry about as a patient or as a physician is red flags, which as I call, is that an infection? So who can get an infection? People that have high blood sugars, people that are doing drugs. This is usually people that can get an infection in their spine. And if it's an infection on the spine, it needs to be in the hospital. So this is all we need to have in mind. Usually people with an infection don't have chronic back pain. They're doing okay and suddenly they feel they have really bad back pain. So that we need to figure out right away. Uh, and cancer is the other side. Cancer can invade the bones and can cause back pain. And this pain is bad, it's miserable, and usually is there all night. What we tell ourselves as physicians, if the pain does not let you sleep or wakes you up at night, it may be cancer, you need to think about it. This is a very important information that people don't realize. So this is what we'll be looking for. The other thing is if we have a fractured vertebra, and some fractures don't really to be treated much, but some of them need to be treated with a brace usually, unless it's a very bad fall that we may even have to operate. So these are the things that people need to worry about, or if it's a massive disc herniation that puts a lot of pressure on all of the nerves that can cause back pain. Again, these are usually problems that people don't have for a year. They may have for a week, for one day, and this is what will be. So that's what we are worried as physicians. This is what patients should worry about as well. So 70% of people that complain of back pain, it's usually some type of sprain. So sprain, it's like any type of sprain of your body. You need to take it easy. It will go away. <clears throat> so that's what we have the tendency to treat patients with. Then degenerative disease of the spine will be 10%. So basically some disc bulging, maybe some joint problems, maybe some disc herniations, or maybe some abnormal movement on the spine. That will be 10%. The fractures is a small percentage, but it's there. And the older the patient is, the more chances we have to see a broken bone, a fracture. This herniation is 4%, like I said, lumbar stenosis. This percentage is in the general population. However, people over 70, the lumbar stenosis is about 20%. And this is a very common problem people have that I want to spend a little more time in the end. Spondylolisthesis is when the vertebra slipped. Sometimes can cause a lot of pain, sometimes may not. However, people have this for a long time. It's nothing new. So it's nothing that we need to get too excited about dealing right away. Sometimes the discs can cause back pain, but again, it's a very small percentage car accident or a bad fall. Cancer is a small percentage. But again, if I have the back pain, I always worry, like, yes, one cancer is a very low percentage, but I want to make sure it's not there. That's important to know. Arthritis and infection, which again, very rare, 
but it's present, and this is what we need to know about. So how would I treat this patient, Jonathan? I'll give you medications, Tylenol, muscle relaxant, Motrin or Aleve, and maybe something stronger for pain like Tramadol, Oxycodone. This is the most important thing for now. If you want to send someone or see a chiropractor, I don't have an objection, but there is conflicting evidence on whether they really help or not. So what I want is to know that the chiropractor is going to do a very thorough exam of you to make sure there's nothing abnormal on your exam and then treat you. As long as they do that, I'm okay with that. But if they start treating you just because you have back pain with what they do in other conjuring patients that day, I don't think that's something wise. Exercise. There's no evidence it's going to hurt. So if you have back pain, you can still exercise as tolerated. Bed rest. Maybe a couple of days and then start light activities. You don't need to be in bed all the time. You need to get up, you need to be moving, you need to get on with your life. The fact that you're 70, 73 years old does not mean I'm old and I'm laying in bed. You get up, you need to continue with your life. This is how we're going to reach 95 and be nice makeup and everything look great. <laughs> Massage is acceptable. Physical therapy is acceptable. We can try ultrasound. The therapist can do that. We can try heat, cold. Traction we are going to recommend in some specific cases where we stretch your back as well as the TENS unit. So the physical therapy is a very good initial recommendation on someone who has a new back pain. Acupuncture, I feel sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I will not jump the gun to recommend acupuncture. The only time I will recommend acupuncture, definitely, to someone that has back pain for a long time, we don't have anything else we can do to help them, so I suggest definitely try acupuncture as well. I think this is an alternative and it's not hurting. So, what we're going to do with this guy, Jonathan, we gave him medication, so we would get him physical therapy. So, it's been six weeks and he's still not happy. If I get some x-rays, I will see maybe a fracture, a broken bone, but that's it. So the next step is to get some imaging, like why is the pain staying? So what I'm trying to tell from that is we don't need to jump the gun and get an MRI immediately or a CAT scan unless we have exam findings that make that necessary. So we'll wait a few weeks, see how you respond to the medication and the conservative management as we call it, and then get an MRI or a CAT scan. What's the difference between MRI and CAT scan? The CAT scan shows you the bones very well. So, if you have a broken bone, the best way to see it is the CAT scan. And it will give you a lot of information about the broken bone. Is it bad? Is it good? Is it something you can treat with a brace only or without any treatment? And also will give you an idea whether it's old or new. Some people have broken bones in their back that they don't know about. Osteoporotic fracture a broken bone in the spine as a result of osteoporosis means you don't even know you have it sometimes. You lift something or you open a drawer which is kind of stuck and suddenly you feel a little back pain and then it's gone after two or three days. Never go to see anyone, then you go to the emergency room, they do a CAT scan, they find a broken bone which has probably been there for two years, they send you to Milton, then they transfer you downtown to BI, you spend the whole night there waiting to see me. I see you and I tell you this is all, you can go home. <laughs> so it's good information to know what's going on about your body. It's really helpful to be able to tell your physicians, oh yes, I know I had it like five years ago, somebody told me I had a broken bone. And it's very helpful for us too. Sometimes I can't tell based on the CAT scan that this is new or old. And you may have some pain if you sprain your back. So what am I going to do then? Then I'm going to get an MRI. And then you need to be wait another eight to 10 hours to get the MRI. And 
so forth. So what do we do this way? We fill up our emergency rooms with patients that probably should not be there, and we torture the patient. And I really do not want to do that. All of my patients, I try to avoid them go to the emergency room. I'd rather see them coming to see me in an office or maybe the urgent care, which is easier, because it's not fair for someone at any age to be stuck there for 24 hours. That's how I personally feel. So anyway, the ideal study is an MRI in most of the cases for anyone with back pain. Of course, people have pacemakers, so we're forced to do a CAT scan. Uh, however, a lot of the pacemakers today, they're compatible with MRI. There is a specific protocol that the, protocol the big hospitals have that despite a pacemaker, we can do the MRI. So not every primary care physician is very familiar with that. So I want everyone to keep in mind, if we have a pacemaker, it doesn't mean MRI is out. The other misconception, if I have rods in my back, I cannot have an MRI. Usually rods are compatible with MRI. It may not be the best quality, but it can definitely be done. <coughs> Injections. So, very good solution. And there are different types of injections. I'm going to try to get you some understanding what the different injections are for the back pain. So the most frequent one is what we call a lumbar epidural steroid injection, cortisone, prednisone. What they do is they inject in the middle of your spine and that covers a lot of area. And that's very good in treating the pain, but also gives the uh, specialist an idea if the pain is helped by the injection, it's probably coming from the back. It may be coming from other things. It could be your hip that's the problem. So if the hip is the problem, you walk crooked, you prefer one leg versus the other, and then puts a lot of stress on your back and back pain. So if the lumbar epidural steroid injection doesn't help, let's think other causes that could be causing the back pain. Facet injections. Facet injections are going to the joints. So if we go to the first slides that I showed you with the anatomy, this is where the nerves are in the spine. So the epidurals go here. The needle goes all the way here and covers all the nerves that would be here. The facet injections go here where the joints are. And each vertebra has two, left and right. So they can do these injections. These are facet injections. And it really addresses the pain that's related to the facets, to the joints. This is what we call mechanical back pain. It's not from direct pressure of the nerves. It's from the joints themselves. And then we also have the trigger point injections that will do on the muscles primarily. So it could be the muscle and, and the tendons that could also be causing pain. These are very easy to do. It can be done at the office. You don't need x-ray guidance. You just feel and you do these injections. And they could potentially be helping. When would you expect to see a surgeon? Codequina means you have no control of bowel bladder. If you have sudden loss of bowel bladder or gradual over the last month, that's when you really need to see a surgeon. Progressive or severe deficit, when you have a lot of weakness, when the leg is not working, you need to see a specialist. The other day I saw someone who had what we call a foot drop, like the foot was not moving up at all for three months. This is unacceptable. What she did, she ordered at the Amazon a brace that was holding her leg up like that, which is what we do when it's a permanent damage. So it was a smart woman that did it. But again, you need to see a specialist to see, can I do something to fix that? Don't wait the three months. Failure of conservative treatment and persistent deficit. So we try this for six you know, weeks. The back pain is still there. I do need to see a specialist. And 
leg pain. If you have constant leg pain, you still need to see a specialist. And these are the diseases that will require you to see a specialist. Number one on people over 70, lumbar stenosis. What's lumbar stenosis? Narrowing of the spinal canal. So instead of having this kind of width on the spinal canal, it gets really tight. When it gets tight, the nerves are bundling up close to each other and they feel the pressure. And because they feel the pressure, we feel like we cannot stand up straight, we cannot walk more than a block, and our body has to be like this. Have you seen some old ladies walking like this? I used to see them growing up in Greece in villages. So these people have very severe lumbar stenosis. And this is something we can treat. I see people in the supermarket, they get the cart and they walk like this. I'm so tempted to tell them, this is my cart, I can fix you. <laughs> but I cannot. <laughs> so my kids laugh at me when I say that. But these are things we can help with. And the lumbar stenosis can also cause back pain. And this is something we can treat. Can we give injections for that? Yes. The injections will work for a couple of months and then the symptoms will come back. So lumbar stenosis is very high prevalence. We see it a lot on people over 70. It's usually a relatively quick surgery and you go home in a couple of days. And people feel great after that. People stand up straight. People can walk long distances. People feel taller. Their friends say, what happened to you? Because you're like that, you're short. When you straighten up like that, you look taller to everyone. And you can get rid of canes, you can get rid of walkers, you don't need to be on the supermarket like leaning on the cart like that. <laughs> so it's very important to know that lumbar stenosis is something we can fix. Spondylolisthesis is when vertebrae are slipped against each other. Usually it happens over a period of time, could be an injury you had when you were young, but your muscles were really nice and strong and holding things together. But as time goes by, that could be causing a lot of movement of your spine, and that could cause a lot of back pain. We can treat that. But in most cases, with that, we may do screws and rods and do a fusion. So it's a little more involved. But again, a discussion with a specialist is very important. Because then we talk together, we sit down together, and we decide whether surgery is the way to go. People have other problems, need to be on a blood thinner, people need to have blood pressure pills, people are on dialysis because of kidney disease. And that's when we come as specialists to tell you this is the right thing to do. Get the surgery or don't get the surgery. Fracture. If there is a broken vertebra, then we need to decide how we treat. And in most cases, most of the fractures, we just put a brace for anywhere like one to three months, and that should be okay. That should be acceptable, and you'll go on with your life. Rarely I have to operate, so, but this should be dealt by us. If you have a tumor, then we need to talk more. We need to do metastatic workup if we, know, if we don't know what's going on. Uh, we usually try to avoid to operate on someone with a tumor in the spine unless it's a benign tumor inside the spinal cord. And these people can do well. People may be surprised how well patients can do with tumors inside the spinal cord. And the last disease which is the more complex for us to help someone is persistent low back pain due to discogenic disease. So you have bad discs, you have back pain, but nothing striking as being the issue. So this is a very complex decision on what to do with a patient. And the reason I say that is you don't know which is the disc where the problem is. There's no easy surgery we can do to help with that. Do I need to fuse 
one level? Do I need to fuse five levels? Do I need to fuse your chest all the way to your pelvis so you don't move at all? And physicians have tried all these things in the past. But again, we need to think about it. Fusing your whole spine together, is that a trade-off worth to get rid of the back pain? Is the back pain so bad? And sometimes we may have to do it. But I don't think it should be the first point you start with. I think we need to exhaust everything else before we get there. And I'll briefly talk about type of surgeries we do. One is called the decompression. It's the laminectomy, where we basically remove the tissue, the bone, the ligament, and maybe some scar that puts the pressure on the nerves. This is what we will do for lumbar stenosis. It will take us, depending on the levels, anywhere from one hour to three hours. You spend one or two nights in the hospital, you go home in most of the cases, you do well. If you live alone, you can go to rehab, but that's great. This is a great surgery, this is a great outcome. Second is stabilization, the fusion. So what we do is we put screws and rods between vertebra to connect them together, so eventually they fuse together. That's a little more involved surgery, more painful, because it's a longer surgery, it lasts anywhere from three to six hours, and we need to dissect a lot of muscles to do that. For aminotomy is when the nerve is pinched a little bit, and I do it sometimes on younger or older population that we don't want to do a lot, but I specifically find the problem is a particular nerve. I just address this little problem, which takes me an hour, and I don't address the whole picture, which is maybe very difficult. Someone with really bad scoliosis, for example. This has been going on for years. You had it all your life. So do I need to do a scoliosis surgery on someone who's 75? No. But if I can tell, the problem is only this nerve or two nerves on one side, left or right, then I can go just clean up around these nerves without disrupting the spine and people can do very well. So these are different type of surgeries uh, that people may have heard about. Uh, I think it's a little beyond this discussion. So this is what I show in the end when I talk to some of my primary care physicians to think outside the back, not the box. So other diseases that can cause low back pain, what it could be? It could be a disease in the back of your stomach, of your bowels. It could be pancreatic cancer. It could be renal cancer. It could be prostate, pro prostate problems that can cause back pain. Uh, GYN diseases. Triple A is abdominal aortic aneurysm. If it's like pulsating, if it's big and it's about to rupture, can cause a lot of back pain. Uh, herpes zoster, which is usually a very characteristic pattern. People that did not get vaccinated can get herpes zoster. I'm sure everyone has heard from the primary care, you need to get the zoster vaccine. If you have not, talk to them. It's very painful, it lasts a few weeks, and it's very disabling pain. And sometimes diabetes can cause back pain as well. Sacroiliac joint disease. Sacroiliac joints are the two joints here where your pelvis meets your spine. Sometimes this can be part of your back pain complex, and this is a different way of treating. And rheumatologic disease, rheumatologic arthritis, or specific diseases that are rheumatologic and cause back pain. And unfortunately, surgery will not help with that. Thank you. Thank you so much.